I'm going to just talk a little bit about our right of access to information. Um, but just before I start talking, <clears throat> who in the room's ever filed or tried to ask formally, not as a journalist, but submitted a, I know your law's awful and Joe's going to tell us about that, but who's ever tried to submit a formal request for information? Gentlemen, in, in Austria or somewhere else? Right. And did you get it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the classic journalistic route. Okay. And someone else? I saw a hand somewhere over here. In Italy, it's possible? Sometimes. No, no. It is possible by law. By law, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and um, we've got other people in the room from other countries. Nicolai, you filed requests in France. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, right? We've got Friedrich hiding in the corner there, but he knows. <laughs> Use the German Informationsfreiheitsgesetz. So that was just to get a feel. Not very many people, sorry about my German as well. Not very many people in the room. How many of you think that getting access to information from government bodies is your right, as in human right? As in a real right, not just something that would be nice. Not bad, but only about 25%. Okay, I'm going to try to convince you that it is your right. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, just very briefly, in a few minutes, I must spend two already, um, in a few minutes, just tell you very briefly what's going on in the world on the right of access to information. Because frankly, um, without being sort of impolite to my host here in beautiful Vienna, Austria is really not doing very well on this, and Austria is way behind. Um, so, what do we know about this right to know? Um, no, I, I don't suppose, unless you've been in one of my lectures before, in which case keep quiet, no one happens to know who this man is? Any wild guesses? Or the year? Don't tell me who he is, just tell me what year, roughly. You can tell from his clothes. 1766. This is the man who wrote the world's first access to information law. His, he was a Finn in the Swedish parliament and he's called Anders Chydenius. Um, you don't need to remember that. That's a picture of Stockholm to try to give you a clue. The point is that some people have been saying that this is a right for a very long time. And in Sweden, the uh, law is part of the constitution. So your right of access to governments from the documents has been part of the Swedish constitutional framework for, what, two, nearly 250 years. That's, that's quite impressive. Today, well, this was 2011, but to, today we have 90 countries in the world which have laws giving not just journalists, but everyone a right of access to information. And you can see the absolutely, on this graphic, you can see, it's not obviously the, for the sort of data visualization people, I know that the time, the, the time frame is not right here, but I couldn't fit it on, because otherwise Sweden would have been over there somewhere. So 1766, and as you can see, there's been a real explosion in this right of access to information, access to information laws, since the fall of the Berlin Wall. These were kind of Western European countries, the US, Canada, Australia, then the whole of Central and Eastern Europe, and now Latin America, countries in Africa and Asia are adopting these laws. <clears throat> and we've, uh, you, you know, you can argue about the quality of the Chinese law, but even without it, you've got the, more than half the people on the planet living in countries which give you a right of access to information. Now, in terms of this right that I keep calling it a right, um, for a long time, it was not recognized, apart from in some countries, uh, and many of the new democracies in Central and Eastern Europe recognized a right of access to government documents in their post-communist constitutions as part of trying to reset the balance um, after, the, after the denial of information during the communist years. But it's only in 2006 that an international human rights court said, actually, this is a right. And for you, as journalists, it's very interesting how they argued that. They said that the right of access to information is part of freedom of expression. Because 
if we can't get the information that we need to form opinions and to speak out, to, to be a journalist, to write, if you, if you don't have information, your, your journalism, your exercise of your freedom of expression is of very little value. So that was a very, very important development. And as you can see, 2006, we're talking five, six years ago, it's very recent. The European Court of Human Rights in 2009 followed the Inter-American Court. And they said that where the only source of information is a government body, where the government has a monopoly on the information, then there is a right of access to this information. And again, it's linked to freedom of expression. Same kinds of arguments. The Council of Europe has a treaty, the world's first treaty, on access to official documents, which is not yet in force, but countries are signing and ratifying it. Austria has neither signed nor ratified it. Um, I think that this, this information is out of date. We've got five or six ratifications now, and we just need ten for this treaty to come into force. Um, and last year, just last summer, less than a year ago, the UN Human Rights Committee also said that part of the protection of freedom of expression includes a right of access to information from state bodies. And they defined public bodies as including... Uh, private bodies which are performing public functions. So it goes a little bit wider. Um, and I'm not going to do that right now. So the, the right is there, but we have to accept, as with freedom of expression, that it's not an absolute right. There are legitimate, recognized exceptions to, the, um, to getting access to information. This is a my own personal little attempt at a bit of data visualization, I don't know. <laughs> Again, not really, I should talk to some professionals, I know. Um, and, and it's not very scientific in terms of the size of the circles either, but I think you get the idea. We've got things like personal data protection, in criminal investigations, um, it, some countries have royal families that they protect. Um, controversial one. The environment, a small one, but it's interesting because a lot of environmental information is public, but under international standards, it's legitimate to protect information, for example, the nesting sites of rare birds. So there is some information which governments hold which actually really should not be made in the, in, in the public domain because you may need to protect, in this case, even the environment. The question is how big should these circles be? Even if we agree basically on the concepts, they can be very broad or very narrow. And I just want to give you a quick example of that. This is a request that we've sent from Access Info to the Finnish government, asking about, right now there's a big battle going on about the EU transparency rules, and we asked about um, what their, the Finnish government's position was. And in, they gave us their position, but they blanked out the names of two other countries um, who, uh, they, they actually didn't have time to contact them, but I think the other countries are Denmark and, Denmark, Estonia, Finland and Sweden. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's how exceptions can look, and you've probably all seen something like that. Or of course your, your exceptions can be much broader, and then it looks a bit like this which is the Danish answer to the exact same question. And it's very funny, in fact, because they didn't blank out the email addresses. You probably can't read it up the top. But you can see that this message has been shared with Sweden and Finland. So you begin to piece together the information that you're getting from different sources and different countries. Um, Okay, that's, I think I'm going to leave the PowerPoint with that. To be fair on the Danes, we went back and appealed and we did actually get more information. Um, one of the points I'm making here, for people in Austria who are, uh, and you're going to be even more sort of depressed and frustrated probably after the next speaker, so um, I want to give you a little bit of hope and optimism. Um, <clears throat> the right of access to information is a right that you can exercise not only in your own country, but in other countries as well. And I've brought with me, possibly not enough, but I've brought with me this, um, the Legal Leaks Toolkit. 
So how to, how to get information by legal ways rather than leaked or by, you know, the brother of your cousin or whoever works in the ministry who can slip you the document. Um, this is a guide. It's in English, this copy. We, we're getting it into German, actually, but it's not in German yet. This is a guide for how journalists can use the right of access to information in different countries around Europe. So I'll share out the copies that I've got with you. It's available online. Um, it has a little bit about data journalism in it. But essentially, it's got some tips and hints as to what you should do. And there's a very slimmed down version of this in the data journalism handbook that uh, Liliana was talking about. So we took a sort of extract and put it into the data journalism handbook. Um, and what part of what my role and what I'm trying to encourage you to do is use your right of access to information. Obviously, fight for your right of access to information here in Austria and try to get your law better. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to show you, was a kind of ranking of the world's laws so you can get that comparative perspective, see where you stand. If this works. This is a website where we've put on... Yeah, you can see it. So if I go to the country data, I think it is. Nope, results. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to have difficulty getting this all on the screen. But just very briefly, because I've only got one minute left. Up the top here, the best laws in the world. These are, we, we've cut all the elements of the right of access to information into lots of little indicators, um, 67 in total, and we ranked the different laws against them. Serbia comes out number one, very interestingly. And the Serbian law, really, on paper, it's not bad, but also it's working in practice. It's amazing how journalists are getting access to information in Serbia. Obviously, you know, they ha there was a lot of information that was not public, so they've got a long way to go. Slovenia comes in at number two, and then we've got other countries, India, El Salvador, Croatia's there, Mexico, which has a very good law. Now, this is only the law on paper. It's not telling us anything about the situation in practice. But should we try and find Austria? Oops, it's down at the bottom. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> um, so on paper, the Austrian law is barely a law. In fact, you could even have a discussion about whether this is really an access to information law or not. Um, so, uh, you know, th I think that just to give you a sense of the challenge you've got in front of you, but also because I, I do want you to, to encourage you, be, be creative and think laterally in how you're going to get information and from where. And if you think you're not going to get something in Austria, um, you get, ask for it from the EU. And we've got, I, this is one of my favorite examples, so I'm going to finish with this. Um, we've got Friedrich sitting, hiding away behind the pillar. Um, and Friedrich asked for the EU budget in a machine-readable format and got it for the first time ever, which for the pe people who like to take data in machine-readable formats and do stuff with it. That was a great coup. And it's available on a website, which I'll bring up. Um, we'll have time to show you that, I'm sure. And did you get the German budget yet in a machine-readable format? No. OK. So, tr but, but you're obviously, you're trying to argue that if it's available somewhere in a machine-readable format, it should be available in Germany as well, for example. So that's something you can also do when you're, when you're trying to get information in formats that you need to really use it, and you can't. Maybe look to a neighboring country. If you can get it in Serbia, why can't you get it here? If the EU can do it, why can't we do it in, in Germany? Um, I'm going to have to stop there. Uh, I think that was 13 minutes, maybe. Um, but uh, we'll have time for questions and discussion afterwards. Thank you very much.